and welcome, I'm your code monkey. One of the windows that you use all the time is the console window. It's where you see messages, warnings and errors. I've spent maybe thousands of hours looking at it. And if you spend that much time looking at something, it might help to have something better. So here we have the Editor Console Pro. This is a tool that adds a ton more functionality to the regular console in order to help you become quite a bit more efficient. And it's actually on sale right now as part of Unity's Black Friday, it's 50% off. So here in this video, let's see if this awesome asset is worth the cost. I've installed it on this project, just imported from the package manager. Now I can go into window, then open up the console pro. And yep, here it is, this nice window down here. I can put it side by side with the regular console to see the difference. So here is the regular console and here is console pro. And right away, you can see how it looks quite a bit more complex. Here I have some messages so you can see the difference. First of all, visually, the errors and warnings, they have a nice background color. Although, by the way, all these colors, all this stuff, this is all pretty much customizable. This is insanely customizable. So at a glance, you can see errors, messages, and warnings. And then down here for the stack trace, that one is also quite a bit better. It shows the regular message, just like the console itself also shows the message. And then one important big difference is right here, the stack trace. Whereas over here on the regular console, it really just says this message was fired from testing.awake on this line. Whereas over here, we can see not just that line where it was, but we can see the actual contents of that line, as well as the surrounding code surrounding that line. So this change alone, this one I would say is worth the 15 bucks. If I want to see what exactly fired off this message, I've got to click on this. That will in turn open up Visual Studio and then I can read it. Whereas over here on this one, I can really just go through all these and I can instantly see exactly the source code that fired this message. So it works for messages, works for warnings, works for errors. And of course, this becomes even more useful when you have a complex stack trace kind of like this one. Whereas over here on the original console, this one basically just says this. So compared to these two, you can see how this one by default gives you quite a bit more information. Now I've been using Unity for many, many years, for over a decade at this point. I'm already pretty good at reading this stack trace and being able to see exactly where the functions are being called. But it is so much better to just see this. Just see how this one, so testing that awake, this one called some function, which in turn called this function, this one, this one, and at the end here we've got debug and log. So this alone is a pretty nice big difference. And of course, if I click on it, I can actually go to the source code. So here it is, just opens up Visual Studio and goes straight to the offending line. Then one of the most powerful features of this console are simply filters. For example, here I have a nice demo scene that I can walk around and I can interact with some NPCs. It's a scene that I built for this video tutorial. I've added some logs to be able to debug when the player was talking to some NPC. So I can move around, I can talk to this NPC and that fires a message down there. I can talk to this one and so on. I can enable the button and set up that. And there you go, this one's firing a bunch of messages, but since the player itself, the player is firing off tons of messages, it's really tricky to actually find the message that I'm looking for. So this is where filters come in. And if I want to filter messages, I've got various ways of doing that. One super simple way is just creating a temporary filter. For that, we just go into any logs and here we write a special character. By default, it's a number sign or hashtag, then write something and then close it. So like this, this is going to act as kind of like a player tag. So I just put it just like this. And now when I try it again, again, on the main console, I still see just a ton of stuff. It's very tricky to actually find exactly what I'm looking for. Right now, I want to basically ignore all these player messages. And thankfully, over here, it's super easy. We can see this one basically showed up in a different color. And over here on this corner, we can see basically all the filters. So we can toggle all the various messages. So we see we have a bunch of logs, a bunch of warnings. We've got no errors. And then we've got our custom player tag. And these are all toggleable, so I can just toggle them to enable or disable them. And there I go. So if I want, for example, to see just the player messages, there it is. So I can see just those messages. If I want to see all the other ones, I can basically toggle all the other ones except that one. And there I go. So now I can see, yep, there's the message that I want to see. So the NPC, this businessman shirt, this one was interacted with, then the other one, then the button, then the door. So it's this simple to basically group up a bunch of messages. Just make a temporary tag directly here. And then over here, it automatically adds a button so I can easily toggle and enable or disable those messages. So you can already imagine how useful this is if you have a ton of objects firing off a ton of messages. You can make individual tags, individual filters for each of those types of objects. And then you can very easily just cycle through and actually find the message that you're looking for. This one over here, like I said, is a temporary filter, but there are basically two ways of making a filter. So we can make this, or we can just right click over here in empty space and then go into preferences. And here we've got a whole ton of settings. And for example, the one that we just created was a temporary filter. So we can see it over here. We can see, yep, this is the character that I mentioned. So we've got a start, then character, and then we can write something in between. And here, if you want, you can play around with how exactly that filter is going to look like. But these are temporary filters. Then, of course, you can make some more permanent filters. So a custom filter, you can go ahead and add it. The name is something, let's say player. Here, define a color, define an icon. You can really customize all of this quite a lot. And then here, you've got searches. You can add a bunch of search terms. And you can search for some very specific stuff. For example, you can search for just player. And you can make it an exact match, case insensitive, a fuzzy search, rejects, or a bunch more. Then if you want, you can remove them from the log. Or importantly, you can search for it between logs of different types. So just normal log, a warning error, and so on. Or you can actually search between all these various columns. So you can search in the log message itself, or you can make a filter that is based on the file or the class name, something like that. 
So again, if you have tons of messages coming from all over the place from multiple objects, you can just filter, okay, just show me all the enemy class logs, just show me all the NPC class logs, and just like that, you can have a console with literally tons of messages and yet have that be quite readable. So in this case, if we leave it just like this, we can already see, yep, there we go, we've got a nice player log. So if I want to toggle the player messages, there you go, just like that. And basically all those search options, those are also usable right here. So in the actual search bar, again, you can do for exact, exact case and sensitive, fuzzy, rejects, and so on. Then you can search for something in any kind of visible column, just a log, path, class, and so on. And for the columns, you can right-click over here on the empty space, and you can basically toggle all of these columns. So by default, you've got the log column. Then you can also have, for example, the class, and that is coming. So these are coming from the player interact class. Then if you want, you can also show the method so you can see exactly where that function, where this message is coming from. Then again, you can continue playing with the filter so you can see, okay, so this message over here comes from the interact function on the door interactable, then on the button sphere, NPC, and so on. So yep, you can easily see all the messages. Or even if you do have thousands of messages kind of like this, it can be quite tricky to find exactly the message that we're looking for. Like, let's say I want to find this NPC message, but I was all the way over here and I don't want to find it manually. Of course, I can just search here, search for NPC, and there you go, that one shows just those. Or another interesting feature on this one is instead of just this, which basically filters out everything that does not have that, instead of this, you can use find, and basically this still shows all the messages, and now on these buttons, you can basically find the next result, find the previous one, and so on, and basically just scrolls the list directly onto that message. So this is really great, because sometimes I do want to find the right message amongst a thousand different messages, but I don't want to hide all the other ones. I just want to find in that message list, and that can't really be done over here on normal console, but over here with this one, yep, that works. Then here, if you click on these little three dots, you can see a bunch of things like, for example, export. So if you want to export this log, this specific log onto a text file, again, if you were using just a regular console, you have to manually go find the location of that file, then copy paste that file to someone else so it doesn't get overwritten the next time. Whereas over here, just export and you can export directly. Another really awesome thing is this one, so the horizontal stack. So if you have basically a console log with a stack that is pretty massive, if so, it's really hard to read over here on the original console, but on this one, yep, you can easily see. So even on something that is very complex, you can still see exactly where this mesh is coming from. And then over here on the preferences, over here you've got a bunch more stuff. So for example, on the logs, you can do word wrap or not. You can colorize them with the filter column, like I mentioned in the beginning. Then on the toolbar, you can literally play around with all of the tools that you see on the toolbar. All the columns, you can also organize them, set up the filters, send their filters and so on. You can ignore some wrapper functions, ignore some logs. Again, all of this is very much based on those search terms. So that very powerful search, you can apply them to pretty much anything. If you work as part of a team, you can create a settings file and easily share them to your teammates. Alternatively, you can also simply make a backup so you can export this. For the fonts and colors, like I said, you can easily modify them. So you can have literally any font you want. So if you prefer a different font to this one, like for example, if you prefer a monospace font, on the original console, you cannot do that, but over here, yep, you can use whatever font you want. Here, I can pick a different one just for fun. And if they're going to look at that, that is a very, very different console. Simply like I said, this is a very interesting tool. It basically takes the original console and makes it so much better. You can see at a glance, side by side, you can see the massive difference. This is a normal console, pretty much has no information. You can see this one, a ton more info. And again, since this is something that you'll look at for literally hundreds or thousands of hours through your entire game dev career, it does pay to have something quite a bit more useful. Right now, it's currently on sale for really just 15 bucks. So based on what we saw, I would say that is very much worth the cost. Like I said, every single game, regardless of genre, is going to use a console. So you might as well have a better console, something that is easier to use, easier to read, to find, to work with in pretty much any way. So based on that, for this price, I would say this thing must have. If you want to get it for yourself, check it out with the link in the description. It is still 50% off for a few more days. And that link is also an affiliate link. So if you pick it up through there, you get a really awesome asset and I get a nice commission. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.